This helicopter is in trouble and about to crash. The pilot was performing a difficult maneuver which may be needed for real in Afghanistan. But here, in this helicopter simulator in the Czech Republic, helicopter pilots from around the world can practice flying in Afghanistan even before they step foot in the country. So why are helicopters so important in Afghanistan? Most importantly, they are the preferred means of getting around. Afghanistan's infrastructure has suffered from years of war and neglect, meaning quick, versatile air transport is much quicker and safer. And this is one of the reasons why helicopters are so valuable. They provide a versatility that is rare amongst the other pieces of equipment for the armed forces. If you need to get troops into a location or the wounded out of a location, you will probably choose a helicopter. For combat, helicopters provide more flexible firepower, taking less time to be called upon and able to loiter longer than jets. But Afghanistan is not a welcoming environment for helicopters. Landing at its dusty locations is hazardous for pilots and for the helicopter's engines. Very skilled low-level flying is often needed. Afghan snow can threaten whiteouts for pilots. And Afghanistan generally being hot and at high altitude means pilots have to fly in thinner air, reducing helicopters' ability to lift. Add to this the higher wear and tear for helicopters operating in Afghanistan and the higher cost of flying there, and it's clear that operating helicopters in Afghanistan is hard on both pilots and budgets. The new multilateral aviation training centre could help on both counts. For pilots, it's a way to practice real flight conditions with mixed crews, changing conditions and flight analysis. For budgets, it helps provide a lower cost pooled way for several countries to use shared equipment in improving a key capability. The benefit for the multinational crews is that uh, the pilots from the different countries, they need to have a one language in the cockpit. Because if you know, if you have on the captain's seat uh, guys from the Croatia, on the right seat uh, can be guys from the Hungary, and in the middle it could be guys from the, I don't know, from the, for example, Czech Republic. And each country uh, has a little bit different procedure also. Due to be ready in 2014 or 15, the proposed centre will have a base in the Czech Republic. This is a so-called smart defence project, and it recently added Hungary to its participants, which already include the US, Croatia, the Czech Republic and Slovakia. The signing here today of Hungary adding its name to the Multinational Aviation Training Centre indicates that smart defence is moving far more from being a concept into a growing reality. Currently, training for pilots focuses heavily on skills they may need in Afghanistan, such as low-level flying, flying in mountainous areas, or flying in formation. But simulators and trainers are highly flexible and can present pilots with a variety of challenges from around the world. And as the drawdown in Afghanistan continues, it will be training for these new challenges where this particular area of smart defence may have the most effect.